All right, so after this brief introduction, now let's look how are we going to generalize or apply this batch-based training uh, or mini batch-based training approaches to uh, GNNs, um, graph neural networks. So the first question here is that how to define the batch uh, of training nodes for GNN training. So how to sample the training nodes. And we can look at a simple example. So let's start with the stochastic gradient descent. So let's see how this works on a single graph. So we will apply these rules. So basically for each data point, we will calculate the gradient of uh, the loss, and then we will update the, the uh, parameters of the whole network, uh, all parameters of the GNN layer, okay, uh, using, uh, including the transformation nonlinearity, if we have, for example, um, any additional uh, layers like MLP layers, we will update all these. So W here is the aggregated parameters of the whole GNN network from the first layer to the final layer, okay? So uh, now, if we do this, uh, so here, I want you to look at this figure and let's see what we have here. So, uh, so let's say we want to update the, uh, actually this is, so we want to update this node. So we want to calculate the gradient uh, at this particular node, uh, training sample or training node in our GNN. And to update, uh, to calculate the gradient uh, or to update, you know, the embedding of this node, right? Uh, we need to calculate the gradient of the loss. And to do so, uh, we need to use the neighbors, right? So basically for every single node in a particular layer, to have the updated parameters for this node, to update the embedding of this node, we need to look at its neighbors. So we need to trace it back. So we look at its neighbors, uh, first, um, you know, uh, one hop neighborhood. And then if we, we trace it backward to the origin, the origin of the network. So here, because we have a two hop neighborhood, it's a two layer network. We trace it back. So we have the first you know, uh, neighbors here, uh, let's call them one, two, and three, okay? And then uh, we will have the neighbors of the neighbors. So we trace it back again, and we will have these uh, neighbors here, four, five, six, and seven, all right? So you can see that all of these nodes, they actually contribute to the update of the embedding vector H, you know, at a particular layer here, k plus two, so k is equal equals to two. So if we want to update, uh, to calculate the node embedding uh, at this layer, so let's call this node i, for example, okay, uh, or zero, we start from zero, of node zero, then we need, uh, we need to basically um, trace it back, right? So let's put h, and this is node uh, zero, so i equals zero. So yeah, so, so the problem here is that we need to, uh, you know, like trace it backwards throughout the layers uh, until we get to the first layer. And here, this is actually the receptive field of the node in a given layer. So this whole area right here defines the receptive field of the node and the receptive field is defined when we, you know, like kind of uh, backdrop or like, you know, we trace back all the connections of one neuron to all other neurons in a network until we get the uh, set of neurons that affect, the set of neurons that affect the decision made at this particular layer. So these are all set of neurons or set of nodes in this case that affect the decision or the update rule that happens here, H, you know, uh, K equals two of node I uh, zero, all right? so. Now let's transform this into a node embedding computation graph. So computation graph, it means for, to get the update for the node zero, what do we actually need? So let's look here. Uh, so first uh, we need to trace back its, you know, like neighbors in the, in, uh, so this is in layer one, all right? And then here we have, you know, one, two, three, and then the neighbors of the neighbors. So 
to aggregate information of all these embeddings, all right, of these nodes, this embedder right here was actually updated using its neighbors. So what are the neighbors of node one? It's actually four, five, and zero, right? So here we have four and five. And then for node two, we have zero and six. And for node three, we have zero and seven. So now we can build our computation graph, right? Like this, all right? And then you can see that to get the final update embedding here, updated embedding over here, we actually need to access the embeddings of all these nodes in the previous um, iteration. So you guys can see here, all of these are required for our uh, computation, okay? So even the node itself uh, right here. So this is, this is what we call a computational graph uh, for the node embedding update rule. And we have expanded it uh, throughout the whole you know, like a neural network. So tracing it back to uh, the very beginning of the network. And this is what is required actually to get this update right here, the H of layer, you know, two and node. Um, so let's put this way uh, and node I uh, equals zero. All right. Now, if we're gonna do this for every single point, uh, you will see that there will be a lot of redundancies because if now I'm going to calculate the computational graph of node one, okay, and node two separately, and then for each of these nodes, three, two, randomly sample, maybe six, four, et cetera, you will see that these computational graphs, they have, you know, there is an overlap with their neighbors. So there is an overlap uh, um, in these computations. So we, we calculate the same thing multiple times. So when we do stochastic gradient descent for each node individually on a graph, uh, it is actually very intensive because it, 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 it requires the calculation of similar shared pathways and neighbors, right, uh, for different nodes. So, uh, and you can see this also within the same, you know, within a single computation graph. So uh, if we want to update this for each node individually, the calculation of the gradient will have a lot of redundancy. So we'll have, you know, redundancy, especially between uh, neighboring, neighboring uh, training uh, nodes, which, are here points, okay, data points, all right? So this is not something really nice to have. And as we have seen before, uh, stochastic gradient descent, uh, whether you use it on GNS or deep learning, it is actually time consuming. So let's try to see a better solution. So here we will look at the mini batch. So let me just move this a little bit up, so. So I'm gonna put it here. All right. Okay. So now for this mini batch gradient uh, descent, uh, let's look at this example. So here we will use what we call uh, a random node sampling. All right. So a random node sampling, uh, it means like we will take, uh, we will define a batch uh, using randomly sampled nodes. So randomly sampled nodes, let's say this is the first node here. Let's call it node, um, for example, I, right? So this is node, actually, uh, this is the main node, node I here. So I'm gonna put I, and then we have node J, all right? So here I'm giving an example of a batch, a batch composed of two nodes. So here, a batch, you know, uh, B, uh, the size of B is two, which is nodes I and node uh, uh, NJ, okay? So it's the same idea, basically. You take the graph, you randomly select some uh, training nodes. So here we sample this node and we sample this. We can sample more, of course, okay? So for example, four nodes, and that defines your mini batch, all right? And you're going to calculate the gradient across, you know, of these four nodes, for example, if you have four nodes in a batch. Now, let's look what happens here. So what do we have here in this case? So let's 
uh, write or kind of, you know, uh, define the node embedding computation graph for each of these two nodes. So first, let's start with node um, with node I. So for node I, it has two neighbors. It has, let's call it neighbor one and two. So one and two. So I'm going to put it here. All right. And then one has two neighbors. Uh, sorry, it has only, uh, yeah, two neighbors. It has the, the pink. So let's call it three. All right. And then this is I, right? And three happens to be node J. So I'm going to call it J here for consistency. All right. So this is node J and itself, right? So, and uh, what are the neighbors of two? It's node I and uh, let's call this, you know, number three. So we have one, two, and three. So that's three, okay, for example. So this is the computational graph of the first node and the depth is two, okay? So if you want to update uh, to depth two, get the final embedding, to get the final embedding of node I, we need to uh, you basically get the embeddings of all these nodes um, at the same time to do the aggregation and then the transformation. Now for node J is actually uh, more uh, interesting. So we have more expensive neighborhood and you can see because of the degree of the node. So the node J has three connections, it's connected to three nodes. And here we have one um, and then we have, so we put three here, so three, Right, and then we have I, so let's put, this is J itself, right? And we have, for example, four, let's put this four. So it is connected to four, three, and one. And then we need to trace back. So one is connected to these two. So let's put the numbers here, four, three, this is I, and then let's put five and six. So we have five and six, right? And then we have J two. So what do you guys notice? Now, what happens is that to get the embedding here, to do the update, to calculate the gradient, we need to, um, you know, like take the union of all these nodes and all their embeddings. And we need to calculate independently. We're calculating independently this node embedding computation graph and the second one, right? So this is a waste of resources. Why is that? Because there is an overlap. So let's find the overlap. For example, we can see that node three is used to update the node embedding of J, but also is used also to update the node embedding for node I. Another overlap or redundancy, we need to calculate the embedding four for node four. Um, well, it's not reused, so let's remove that. Actually, it's node one. So we need to calculate the embedding for node one here which is also required for node I. So node one embedding is required for both I and J, but what we're doing, we're calculating them separately in each, you know, for each node individually. So each node has its own computation graph that needs to be calculated, okay, or inferred. So now uh, this is, you know, a bit problematic. So let's look at this. So each node in batch B depends on its neighbors on the previous layers, okay? So the neighbors on the previous layer, this one, and this in turn depends on their neighbors in the layer before that. So the layer before that, which is this one, okay? So now what happens is that this is very time consuming because every time we want to calculate the loss at a single node, in a single layer, we need to actually, uh, so we need to, let's look at this. Uh, we need to calculate the nodes embeddings of the nodes neighbor. So we need to calculate the nodes neighbors nodes embedding at layer K minus one and the recursive ones in the downstream layers as we go down the layers, okay? So basically this is very time consuming. And if you use mini batch uh, stochastic gradient descent, you will we will use actually the subgraph that forms the union of the K hop neighbors in B. So here uh, to do the, um, the batch will be defined by the union of this subgraph. So this is the first subgraph, okay, which is this one. And the subgraph required for the second node and the subgraph required for the second node, let's call it the blue one. So this one, 
Okay, so there is an overlap here. You guys can see. So it's the union of both, and the union will give us the whole here because we have a small graph. But I want you guys to imagine a very large graph. So you know, you will take the union of the local neighborhood or uh, the the neighbors of the neighbors of all sampled randomly sampled nodes, and that will form your mini batch. Okay. So and uh, so this will form your mini batch. It's the union of the K-hop neighbors of all nodes in B. And K-hop, it means you start from, for example, if K equals three, you go to two, one, zero. If K equals five, you get five, four, three, two, one, et cetera. You trace it all the way back for every single node that you sampled in your mini batch, okay? So now the remaining nodes uh, will not contribute to the node update, uh, which is kind of good. So that's fine now. Like we're we're, we're not gonna update the the um, the nodes uh, using the other, you know, like any further away or far away nodes. However, here you guys can see that actually because our graph is kind of small, so we ended up the union uh, involves the all nodes. Okay, in this case, just in this case. All right, so I'm gonna remove this. So. All right, cool. Now we have seen uh, how we do single uh, stochastic gradient descent. So it's a bit blurry, sorry about that. So let's wait, that file is heavy. Now stochastic gradient descent, uh, also the mini batch. So how do we do mini batching? And let's look at this question now. So what happens when the graph is dense and the GNN is deep? All right, so if we have a very dense graph and we randomly sample nodes in a mini batch, right? So I want you to take a minute and think about it. So uh, in terms of computational power, in terms of memory budget, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, training, etc. So as you have, if you have a dense graph where everybody is connected to everybody, then every time you sample, right? There is a likelihood, there is a, you know, a high likelihood that one sampled node would be a neighbor or close to another sampled node. And, uh, you know, in this case also, it means that you need to include if it's densely connected, what happens as you guys can see here. So let's look at this example. So we want to calculate, update the embedding of this node. All right, so we have the embedding of this node. So to do that, we need to trace it back. So we need to identify its, you know, first rank neighbors. And then after we do that here, uh, it's actually these guys, right? All right, I'm gonna remove this one. Then we do the second, uh, the neighbors of the neighbors. So the neighbors of the neighbors will give us all these guys, okay? So these, these, all these, and then second, right? So a neighbor of a neighbor, and then right here, all right? And then, uh, so basically you're, we're gonna get all these, these nodes right here, okay? So these nodes are, are very dense, so we're covering almost the whole graph, right? So to update this embedding, I this is my uh, uh, receptive field, I need to go, I need to calculate the embeddings of all these guys that are required for the aggregation, the, the aggregation, uh, you know, that we need to do for calculating the embedding at this kind of the final layer, layer two here, for example, okay? Or this particular layer. So uh, here, this is basically what we call a graph expansion problem, which means every node may be in the receptive field uh, of um, every output. So you, you will end up, you know, of all nodes being in the receptive field of a particular node. So if I select this node, I'll have a similar receptive field, a very large kind of receptive field like this, right? If I sample another node, if I want to update uh, another node right here, so we're gonna have also the same problem or this one. So basically this is, this is really, um, you know, uh, intensive in terms of both memory usage and compute budget. So it's not uh, feasible uh, to have this kind of, you know, uh, uh, update because here, if we do node-based sampling to create random node sampling to create the batch, the mini batch, 
we're sampling uh, in a dense graph and the dense graph, everybody is connected. So in dense graphs and deep graphs with multiple layers, with many layers, uh, you will not be able to uh, calculate this or to do the updates. You may get an out of memory error or it may take very long, uh, you know, a very long time to train your network. So now, aside from, in addition to the graph expansion problem, so just expanding on that. So this is really, um, as I said, co costly to train and sometimes impossible because you have a, an exponential time complexity for a fully connected graph, right? To the GCN depth, the number of layers in 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 the G uh, in the uh, in the graph neural network. So, how can we solve this better? How to batch smartly? How to select the nodes that will go into particular batch? Okay, smartly to speed up the GNN training and lower the memory usage. So, this is a kind of um, a question I would like you guys to reflect on before. I reveal the solution to you. So here, what we have, we have, remember, uh, if we have two nodes and the nodes, they share neighborhood, uh, they share, share neighbors or there are neighbors, right? We will have a lot of overlap between them. And, uh, and uh, we want to actually minimize that a little bit or somehow leverage that, okay? So to avoid a lot of redundancies and, um, so batching strategies in GNNs are very important. So this is very different from deep neural networks because you don't have the graph structure. Structure. So here we do have a graph structure, which means a training point is connected to another training point. So remember, we have a collectivist kind of you know uh, learning paradigm. So everybody is codependent. So how can we kind of leverage this codependency? and let it play for us and not against us. So, so the one potential solution is to uh, you know, do a node sampling and control the way we sample nodes, okay? So for example, um, a node sampling, so we have done a random node sampling before, so this is a random neighborhood sampling, which means we're not sampling only the nodes, but also we're randomly sampling or selecting a subset of neighbors, all right? And this has been proposed in GraphSage in 2017. So the paper basically uh, suggests that we first randomly define uh, a mini batch of, uh, of nodes. So this is what we have done before. So nothing has changed here. But next, the key idea here is to randomly sample a fixed number of their neighbors in the previous layer, all right? And remember where we're tracing backwards. So here we do the same and we randomly sample a fixed number of their neighbors in the layer before that, and we do this recursively. So let's look at this example. So first we start with this node. This node has many neighbors, has all these neighbors, okay? So now instead of taking all these neighbors, we're going to sample three. So the sampling rate here is like select, let's call it rate at three nodes, okay? Selecting three, only three neighboring nodes, let's call it um, R for now. And this will give us these randomly selected nodes. Now in the next layer, what we're going to do, so, uh, so we have these selected nodes, right? So one, two, and three. Now we're going to randomly sample another three. Okay, so another three, which means a neighbor of a neighbor. So we need a neighbor of this guy. So we will select this shared neighbor and this one, so two, right? So here we have um, two nodes selected and this one. So if you look at the neighbors of the neighbors before that, it was really expensive. So it was a lot of nodes, right? So here uh, we had a lot of nodes, it's very dense, but now that you compare it, instead of having this whole receptive field, right? Now we are, uh, we limited it to this small subgraph that is, uh, you know, tightly connected. So what happens in this case is that we minimize the number of embeddings that we need to calculate, right? So we don't need to select all neighbors. Every time we're going to randomly sample, and this is very important word, these are drawn randomly. Okay, and we fix the number. So every time we draw three randomly for each node. 
all right? So this is a node in the batch. So let's say this is node one. So my batch has node one, and then maybe this node, okay, node two, and let's call this node three. So it has maybe three nodes, and we need to do the same and sample using these same rules, and that will define our mini batch B, all right, that we will use for training. And this is called random neighborhood sampling. We're sampling randomly what? The neighbors, all right? Now, let me ask you two questions here. So about this strategy, the graph stage strategy. So the first one, uh, and feel free guys to have a look at the paper. It's a very interesting read. So the first question is, will the node subgraph increase with each layer? So the node subgraph here, you can see at layer, uh, this is, you know, uh, the first, you know, the, the, the first ring, and then we have the two, ring uh, or two hop neighborhood. So will we still have this expansion? Yes or no? You can see it here. The answer is yes, we will have this expansion because you know uh, we are still sampling neighbors, right? So we're expanding, we're further expanding our neighborhood. We are doing this expansion, right? However, we are controlling it. It's a, it's a, in a, we're expanding in a more controlled way. So we're not in like kind of propagating the signal across all neighbors. We're selecting a subset of neighbors randomly, which means we are controlling our neighborhood and the controlling the size of the subgraph or the computation graph that will be used to update the node embedding. All right. Now, the second question is if the same batch is drawn twice, Will we have the same updated embedding? So remember, in um, when we do mini batch based training, so you have all these mini batches, right? And then uh, you can draw the same batch again. So as you randomly draw sample nodes, you can also randomly draw the mini batches. So there is a randomness also there. So there's it's a randomness uh, within randomness. So we try to randomize multiple times to improve generalizability. Randomness is a very powerful concept uh, in uh, machine learning, deep learning, and also geometric deep learning with graph neural networks. So here what happens if we, let's say this batch, we select the same nodes again. So we're going to run this. We randomly uh, select, draw these th this batch. So this batch will have, has always nodes one, two, three, but now we're going to select the neighbors, all right? So the question here, will we get the same subgraph, okay? So will we get the same subgraph that will lead us to the same updated embedding? Will we get the same update, uh, updated embedding at uh, the layer K plus one using the embeddings from layer K, all right, previous layer. So here, it's an important question to think about because the key lies in this word, randomly. So let's say we selected node one, this node, and the first, when we sampled, we sampled these three nodes, right? But we could have randomly, if we run again and our function is random, right? It's not anchored. We're going to sample other nodes so we can draw these three guys, right? So now the neighborhood has changed in uh, this first ring. So which means when I draw three other nodes, so I can select this neighbor, right, of these guys. And then I can select uh, this one and I can select this one. So now the subgraph has completely changed. So it's we have a completely different you know, subgraph that will contribute to the update of the embedding H. And this is because of the random drawing. So the answer is no, since you know the contributing neighbors are selected randomly. Uh, so even when the same batch is drawn twice, we will have different embeddings for the node in the batch. And this randomness, as I mentioned, it acts as a regularizer of the network learning behavior. All right. Now we have seen two different approaches here for sampling and batching. So, um, so first we can take a single node, it's not really cool. Uh, we can define mini batches, which helps you know alleviate the computation load, but we still have a lot of redundancy. And when the graph gets deeper, it kind of explodes. We have a graph expansion problem. And we thought about solving this uh, using uh, random neighborhood sampling, so node sampling with neighborhood sampling, and this is what GraphSage has introduced. And last 
we have maybe a better approach. So instead of sampling nodes or neighbor and, and their neighbors, we can sample whole subgraphs or clusters of nodes, all right? And this is the idea. This idea has been proposed in different also research papers. So this is called graph sampling, okay? So we divide the graph or we partition the graph into subsets of nodes. And uh, these subsets of nodes will be close together, will be very similar. So now we're using a sort of a clustering algorithm. So we're not selecting you know, the nodes randomly. We don't care where they are, but now we will select the nodes in such a way that they will be close to each other. So those that are close will be put in a batch together because here they are highly interconnected. So we will kind of break down or divide the graph into uh, mini graphs or subgraphs. So let's look at this together. So first, we cluster the graph nodes into disjoint subsets of nodes before processing. So we can use a clustering uh, method to maximize the links within uh, each cluster between nodes, all right? And second, what we do is we treat each cluster as a batch, or we can also treat a random combination of batches as a cluster. So we can combine uh, two clusters and say these two clusters were define the nodes in my batch, all right? And uh, we, we do this, so if we combine two clusters, we can reinstate any links between them uh, from the original graph. So let's look at this example. So in this example right here, we have an original graph. And if we do clustering, so we will divide the graph into, for example, four clusters. So each cluster will define a batch. So here, this cluster will define batch one. So B here is equal to B1. So this is batch one uh, with all these nodes. We'll have also batch two, okay, et cetera. So B2, et cetera, all right? And, uh, and we have four batches, four clusters. So we will basically train our model. We will iterate over all these batches. So in the training, you iterate over batches. So here we have small number. You can randomly sample batches if you have so many batches. So if you have, for example, thousands of batches, you can randomly draw and take, not iterate over all of them. You can randomly select, for example, 100 batches and say, I'm going to optimize over only these randomly sampled batches. But when you have a limited number of batches, as in this case, we have only four. So we will iterate over all of them. So we will calculate the gradient with respect to batch one batch two, so here uh, of our loss, if you guys remember, you know, the lecture, the previous lecture, right? So of this, you know, calculated at this batch, and then this one, right? And then uh, this, uh, this is actually an average across all, over all these nodes in this batch, right? And what we do is like, we're going to update, iterate over all of these uh, batches. And then uh, after the iteration is complete and we have, updated the parameters that, that defines an epoch, all right? So when we complete the iterations and the updates, the forward and backward passes, then the, this defines an epoch. Uh, and then, yeah. So now this is an example where we combine two clusters. So we decided here that these two will define a single batch, okay? So this is batch one. So we have three batches. So in this case, we reinstate the connection between these two. So that's what we put there. So we kind of, you know, after we partition the graph, we kind of reconnect them or patch these two clusters back. And this, you know, graph will define our, um, you know, training, uh, uh, our training batch. And we will try to learn the embedding, update the embedding for each node uh, in this batch. All right, cool. Now, this is graph subgraph sampling uh, and or uh, graph partitioning. And here, let's look at a few more examples. So one example is the subgraph sampling um, is the cluster GCN. So cluster GCN is a, uh, was published in 2019 as a subgraph sampling uh, method. And also feel free to have a read at the paper. So here in this paper, it's uh, the idea is very simple. So we want to design an efficient algorithm for training deep, large graph uh, convolutional networks, GCNs, all right? So first, 
We sample a block of nodes that associate with a dense subgraph identified by clustering algorithm, which means we cluster the nodes into uh, you know, different subgraphs, okay? And then we restrict the neighborhood search within the subgraph. So because this is like partitioning, exactly the idea that I explained earlier. So we kind of, you know, separate out these subgraphs and we ca calculate the updates uh, using the neighborhood within each subgraph. So this maximizes also the within batch edges, which means we want to have, you know, uh, a subgraph highly connected, okay, not sparsely connected. And uh, a cluster defines a batch of training nodes. And next, what we do, so uh, this uh, simple, it is a simple uh, and effective strategy because it, one of the uh, benefits of this method is that it improves the memory and computational efficiency. Now, we don't need to uh, look at store the, the, the history of embeddings of all, all neighbors of neighbors of neighbors throughout the whole graph. Now, we're breaking the graph into smaller graphs and processing each unit individually or each subgraph individually, which means we can easily parallelize here. Uh, and this, you know, uh, this is good for memory and also for computational time. And if you read the paper, you'll find very interesting results and comparisons against a GCN in terms of performance, memory usage, and also uh, um, you know time uh, training time for epoch. So now let's look at this example right here. So in this example from the paper, we have layer one. So we this is our original graph. Okay. So in layer one, we have the, the red node. So we want to calculate the embedding of the red node uh, to update it. So to do that, we need to go through uh, up to layer four. So we need to include literally the whole graph right here. We have a small graph, right? So it's, it's, we expanded the neighborhood. Now, uh, when we do the, um, the, the, this is what we call the neighborhood expansion, right? So when we do the, the partitioning or the clustering, um, you know, we we avoid this expensive neighborhood expansion because we split the graph into two clusters. So you can see here, we can easily cluster these together. So now that I want to update the uh, embedding of the red node, I only need, uh, you know, to involve smaller, a smaller number of neighboring nodes and their uh, embeddings, right? All their embeddings. So here we we process this independently of all other graphs and each node. So for example, if I sample a node from this graph, uh, from this, this part of the graph, then I will need to kind of only consider this subgraph. So, uh, or this cluster, which defines, oops. So it's, which defines our batch, our mini batch. Uh, let's write it properly. So this is a mini batch, all right? Cool, so this is a cluster GCN. Now, we have seen two types of sampling. We have seen node sampling, neighborhood sampling, which is a part of node sampling, and subgraph, whole subgraph sampling, or graph partitioning. And now there is a different way of doing the sampling. So we can sample uh, nodes, subgraphs, and we can sample from the layers directly, okay? from the layers or the neighborhoods that we have. So let's look at that in an in independent way. So here, this method is called layer sampling. So in layer sampling, uh, what we do, so we have basically, we sample nodes in each layer independently. And this is a very key word. This is an important word because here, we don't care if the nodes are neighbors anymore. We take the first node and you know uh, and we randomly sample uh, nodes from the layers. So for example, if I take you know like um, a particular node, so I'm going to show you here. So this is a good example actually. Uh, and this this figure is from uh, the ladies' paper. Uh, so we sample independently, and uh, there are different methods that do layer wise sampling with different pros and cons. It's an ongoing area of research. So a paper was published in 2018. Uh, called fast GCN. So fast GCN basically calculate, we first calculate a sampling probability based on the degree of each node. So depending on the degree of each node will define the probability of selecting that node, okay? And then we sample a fixed number of nodes in each layer accordingly. So 
Now we select nodes based on, on their degrees, and then we sample a fixed number of nodes in each layer. But this sampling uh, is very independent of you know uh, the node uh, itself sampled in the previous layer. So this these two steps now are independent. So which means that here we uh, only use the sampled nodes to build a much smaller sampled adjacency matrix. Okay. And then the computation cost is reduced. So we are, we're reducing the computational cost because we're, we're kind of shrinking the graph by this random sampling. However, uh, there is a, a drawback to this. The sampled nodes from two consecutive layers are not necessarily connected. So we're disconnecting the topology of the graph or the structure of the graph through the layer-wise sampling. So for example, let's look at this uh, figure right here and we're gonna see another um, detailed example. So here we have node sampling. So in node sampling, for example, graph sage, um, uh, in graph sage, so we have three methods. We have two nodes, uh, one node sampling method, which is a graph sage and two layer sampling methods, the fast GCN and the ladies. And this is from the paper published, the ladies published in uh, 2019. Now, um, here, the black nodes, they denote the nodes in the upper layer. So these are the nodes in the final layer that we want to kind of update, right? So we need to update recursively. And the blue nodes, so let me change the color, the blue nodes uh, in the dashed circle, um, and they are their neighbors. So, you know, this, these are the neighbors of this black node, and these are its neighbors too, okay? So we sample two nodes, we have their neighbors, and the node in the red frame, uh, in the red frame is the sampled node. So these are actually the nodes that we selected, the sampled nodes. So what we know is that when we do the sampling, all right, so we selected, so for example, we selected, um, you know, two nodes here. So this guy has two, uh, let me change the color. So I'm gonna use a different, maybe green here. So you guys can see, so, this guy right here, it has two neighbors and these were sampled. And this one has three neighbors, but we sampled only these two. So what do you guys know this? We have a redundancy here. So we have, uh, you know, the one with the triangle, it's a redundantly sampled um, in this neighborhood. So basically this neighbor is sampled twice and we need to calculate it twice, all right? So uh, this has been solved in fast GCN. So fast GCN, uh, will sample nodes outside uh, of the neighborhood. So fast GCN is, um, it doesn't, you know, necessarily has overlaps, but the problem with fast GCN, which is a layer sampling method as uh, described here, is that it may end up sampling nodes outside the neighborhood because we're randomly sampling in each layer. So here, uh, in this case, you guys can see that we sampled two nodes that do not belong to the immediate neighborhood of, of these two, uh, you know, black nodes, right? So you can randomly select nodes that do not belong uh, to the neighborhood that you're interested in, okay? So in, if you have, for example, uh, two layers here, okay? Uh, actually here we have only one, okay, so one layer. So now the ladies is a, a layer dependent important sampling and the key idea of this method is that we will make sure that when we sample, uh, that we can avoid these two problems. We can avoid the um, the neighborhood redundancy uh, sampling, and we can avoid sampling from outside the neighborhood. All right, so outside the neighborhood. So let's look at how the ladies work. So the key concept, so you can also read the paper, have a look at the paper. So this is the paper right here, but I'm going to give you just the gist of it. So just the key idea here. So let's get started. So the paper is very interesting because here let's read um, together. So original full batch GCN training requires calculating the representation of all nodes in the graph per GCN layer, per layer, okay? So which brings in um, a high computation and memory cost. So this is not good to have, right? So to alleviate this issue, several sampling-based methods have been proposed to train GCNs on a subset of nodes. 
So among them is the node-wise neighbor sampling, neighborhood sampling, uh, which is the graph sage that we have seen. Okay, so this is graph sage. And this samples recursively um, using a fixed number of neighbors uh, in each layer. However, the computation cost suffers from an exponential growing neighbor size. Still, you know, we control it, but it can it may explode at a particular uh, time point. Okay. So on the other hand, we have layer wise important sampling method and uh, this discards the neighbor dependent constraints. So we don't care. So the problem with the existing layer wise method at the time, uh, you know, before the prior to the publication of the ladies, which was in 2020, I think 2019, if I'm correct. So, um, so here, these layer wise sampling methods, they do not take into account the the uh, neighbors and they may sample from like fast GCN from outside the neighborhood. So that's not good. So the nodes sampled across layers suffer from sparse connection problems, so which means they are disconnected. So they solve this uh, through this algorithm right here. And let's have a, a look at it together. All right. So in this example, uh, we have first, we have our, let's say this is the graph at layer K plus one. This is the, um, um, the layer, the, fi the final layer or any kind of layer inside the graph, okay? So at, at a given layer, we have our node I and we have a node J here. So we have two nodes in our batch, okay? So let's read this together. So what is the first step in the ladies algorithm? So going from uh, backwards from layer K plus one to layer K, First, for each current layer, K, based on the node sample, uh, sampled in the upper layer, K plus one, uh, it picks all their neighbors in the graph and constructs a bipartite graph among the nodes between the two layers. So let's see this. So uh, the neighbor of I is only uh, this node, okay? So it's uh, this node that's called one, all right? And then the neighbors of J are actually, let's uh, put them together. The neighbors of J are one. So we have all these nodes, one, two, three, and four, okay? So all these nodes are neighbors of uh, the node J. So now what happens is that in this case, what we want to do, we are looking at uh, these nodes, okay? Uh, so we pick uh, all the neighbors and you can see that in this case, uh, if we remove this, okay? So now I'm gonna sample it. So simplify it. So we're going to move this here. Copy, paste, oh, sorry, paste image. So we're gonna put the image here. And this was the, let's say, the original one. So we're going to put them together. And what happens that we see that if we put these guys together here, we'll have something like that. So we created a bipartite graph between the nodes and their uh, neighbors and um, between between these uh, these two layers. And in this case, we can easily kind of, you know, find uh, redundancies, and when we want to sample, now we calculate the probability according to the degree of the nodes in the current layer with the with the purpose to reduce sampling variance. So if we want to sample from here, we're going to take the nodes, for example, with the high with high degree. Okay, so what are the nodes of the high degree? So we have degree three here, two, so three, and then we have two and the purple has two and the one has four. So we can sample simply these two, all right? So these will be sampled and we're gonna use these two for you know our computation, right? So then next it samples a fixed number of nodes based on this probability. So let's say we want to fix the number, so R will be two. So every time we're gonna take only the top two nodes with the highest degree, for example, in this case. So uh, so this is, you know, um, an example, and there are lots of variants in layers.